What's up, people? It's your boy Jaswam here today in Blender, but it's going to be Kerbal Space Program here in a moment. I've been asked a few times, you know, how the heck am I doing these engines and things like that, but to be completely truthful, um, I'm kind of still new to it myself. I only have things like ballast tanks, shady liquid fuel cells, and moist underwater technologies that I've been playing with, but as far as 3D modeling and parts to Blender, uh, from Blender to Kerbal Space Program, I'm okay at it. I'm okay. So anything you're seeing here is going to be my current setup that I'm in the middle of changing because I found better and easier ways to do it. So that being said, once you have the platform for starting out, it's a lot easier to go forward. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start with a really simple, easy engine because that's the easiest thing to do that I can think of. So we're going to go ahead and delete this part here. And if you divert your eyes down here, you'll see that I have screen keys enabled, so you should be able to see what I am doing as far as key presses. So we're going to go ahead and create a quick cylinder, and I can tell you right now that this is fine when it comes to cylinders. Uh, when it comes to creating an engine, this is good for a basic engine. The orientation is actually just right, because we want it to be on the Z-axis pointing up. And this is going to be pointing to the side, and this is going to be pointing. This is not the same axis that you're going to see in Unity or in Kerbal Space Program. So keep that in mind. This is going to end up being your Y axis. This is going to end up being your Z axis. And this is going to be, well, it's going to be your X. <laughs> if I remember that correctly. If I remember that Let me show you my cheat sheet. So you come here, and here's your cheat sheet right here. And this is how I keep it memorized. So that Z axis is going to end up being my Y. And my X is going to be my X. And my Y is going to be my Z. So that's you just have to kind of flip-flop it in your head. So we should be fine. So what we need to do now is get everything to the proper size. So I'm just going to drag this out. As you can see, I just kind of pulled this little uh, plus tab here. Drag that out a little bit so I can view that. And then we need actually need to go here and we're going to click on the scene and you'll see that we need to set this to metric and we're sh we should be good there that's all we really have to do uh, so what I want to do now is get this to the right size once again looking at our cheat sheet we can see here that we can either go 625 which is the really small parts uh, think of something like the the tip the probe t the uh, small really small engine the small basic jet engine those are 0 0.625 and the one two one two five is your basic mark one cockpit uh, 625 is your mark two is your um, the, the large cockpit so I can actually bring those in to show you uh, I ha actually have a script that I have installed to help me out that does help quite a bit but I tend not to use it to be completely honest so let's go to game data and I'll actually bring in one of my old ones that is currently working so let's take a look at super prop I'll bring this I'll just import it in now this script that brings everything in this is actually going to be pretty handy and at the same time it can be a little confusing don't think of it too much because what you are also seeing are some additional parts in there that got added in from unity so you'll see this is my newest prop that I'm still working on uh, a lot to go on it and you'll see it also comes with its own collider it does that because like I said it does pull in a, another part all the colliders and everything come in with it so this is just another way that can help you out immensely if you're trying to get the orientations right what I have noticed what I have noticed is what it will do is it will flip things so usually when I have it in there if I bring in a cockpit a mark one cockpit that I will take everything and I'll just flip it 180 so that way my orientation on the y-axis is proper so let's go ahead and let's get this to the right size here we have our two meter part we're gonna go ahead and make a 1.25 meter part so we're just gonna punch these numbers in I used to do this all by hand and it was ridiculous so I'm not doing that again and we're gonna make it pretty small so 0.625 for the length and 
I guess from here we really need to just bring in a coon. So we're going to go ahead and hit tab to go into edit mode, click this, and hit E to extrude. And we're going to go like this, bring it down some. And then we're going to press S to scale. And we're just going to bring this one down a bit here. I can press shift and I can get more accurate movements here like so. So we can just make a little cone like that. Nice, simple, easy. And that's all we'll do. Nice, simple cone. Now if you wanted to actually bring this down some, you can actually press E for extrude and you can drag that back. That's going to give you a nice little inset area. I've done that on quite a few of my own designs. Or you can delete the face, but then you're going to have to apply uh, something to all the sides, a solidify to everything. But we'll go over that a bit later. So for now, we're just going to go, uh, we're just going to drag it upwards. You can press the, the different axis that you're in. So if I press Z, you'll see it that yellow beam pop in and pop out. If you see it there, then you're locked into that location. You can't drag it any other direction. So that's good. It, it, for extrude, it should lock you in there from what I've seen. So that's going to give us that there. And now we can actually come and press A to select everything. I just like to come here. Like I said, I am just, I'm still kind of new. I like to go in here and make sure I don't have any, any doubled up vertices. And that's our basic engine. So let's go ahead and shading. We're going to hit smooth. It's going to smooth everything out. But as you can see here, it's kind of foggy. So we're going to come here to our modifiers, add modifier, and we are actually going to add in an edge split. And that's going to give us a nice clean edge to this. And we're going to hit apply. To me, that's good enough. So what we're going to do, if I wanted to do the UVs, then I would actually have to come here to the very corner here, drag this over, and then we can actually set this to, uh, to UV edit. And then we can come here and go to mesh and UV unwrap, smart project. I like to have a little a little separation between everything. And that would give us this here. Now, I have a generic image that I use for all of my parts. So if I wanted, I could come here, I can open my generic image, and that's gonna save me a lot of time. I have mine set to this one air tunnels folder, and it's JDSA generic. So that's my current cheat. That's one of the things you can do when you are actually, once you have an image that you like and you just want to use that thing over and over again, you can indeed do that. So let's set ourselves to texture mode. And you see right now how our texture looks absolutely dreadful because, well, these aren't set up properly. So we're going to need to go here. We're going to resize these. And we're going to move everything into the proper location. This is the skin that I like to use. Now, is this fantastic? Is it a complete exact stock alike match? No, it's close, but it's not quite there. I wish it was. I am still in the works of getting it looking better, but it is starting to look a, a bit better as I tweak it out more. Um, let's see if we can shrink this all right, we're 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 totally botching that shrinking job. There we go. Okay, let's do one more. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I need to rotate that 180. Okay, there we go. There we go. I, uh, at times, find myself the clicks that I do on here are a bit extreme because I like to be kind of far out. So I'm going to hold... I can either hold shift and click on this other one or I can hold control and click and drag a circle around. It still is going to select everything the way I want it to. You can overlap these if you want, but keep in mind this is going to cause your textures also to overlap. So be careful on how you overlap everything because if you are a stickler about how you want your texture to look, 
you can indeed find yourself having overruns on your textures and it's not going to look great in the game like right here you can see how it, there's like a design and it kind of cuts off here and just starts another texture same here that's because the the placement of this is not optimal but for now it's going to work so let's drag this out a little bit all right and so now we need to look up top these two circles this is going to be the bigger one here I'm gonna shrink this one down and we're gonna drag this over to this brighter circle so that way people know hey that's where you're going to be connecting things and we're gonna take this one we're gonna drag this down and we're gonna move this to our duct area now if I wanted I could locate the rim here and from there I could place everything on that rim over to over to this red area to kind of give it a red tip but that's going to be a lot of work that I don't feel like doing right now so we're not going to do that right now and now we need to do the inside so the inside is all going to be there so let's go ahead and we can actually take the inside of this if we want and we can actually let's undo that one capture that shrink that all down and we're gonna drag this to the red area it's gonna be the hot do not touch area and you can see here I'm not overly concerned with my uh, textures at the moment still I am going to try to put them at least in an approximate location. So later on, if I feel like messing with this engine some more, at least I will have that ready to rock. And I can do that, and now I can actually drag these out a bit so it captures a bit more texture on this window. Alright, so that's going to give you this. Really simple, stupid looking engine that should work. Okay, so what we need to do now is be mindful of our time, and let's go ahead and save this, and we're going to call this our stupid first engine. First engine. Alright, so first engine, first ENG. So, with our first engine ready to rock, and mind you, we are 1.25, 1.25, we're good, we're good, everything looks good, everything looks clean. We can now go in here and export. So we're going to export this, and since it's, non, it's not an animated part, we're not going to use FBX, that's for your animated parts. That's what I had to do for propellers. Um, I can actually go and ex export it as a DAE file so let's export that as a DAE file and it's going to my micro engine folder just so I know now you get to see the absolute horrible thing that I'm doing in unity I'm so sorry people are gonna yell at me for my horrible job that I've done in making this project folder but you know what it's okay it makes me feel it, it, it it's just easier for me at the moment but we're gonna take a look just apologizing in advance <laughs> okay so here we are in unity ignore everything in here I have actually put everything into this one project because I just wanted to access all my stuff and it was just easier for me to do that so you'll probably see a lot of my other things in here as well things I've been playing with but we can actually go in here and what we're gonna need to do is go to where we saved our file which you'll see here and let me make this a bit smaller and we're actually going to go and find our small engine so first engine.dae we're going to drag this on down to here into our assets now with our first engine.dae in here we can actually go ahead and do some work not much i don't have to do any of this at the moment because well it's really not needed for me right now because I'm not doing any, anything really complex. So we're just going to take this part here. We're going to drag it right into a hierarchy. That's going to give us this part 
right here. Now, for me, I already have a lot of the everything pre-configured in Unity with my part tools. Everything's already added in. So if you are new, do go through, add part tools in. It's really not that hard. It's a drag and drop. Just go and get the part tools and drag and drop it on in, and it should import it for you. What we need to do is we need to go to KSP, and we need to go to part tools. And that's going to give us this here. I'm going to set this to MBM for now. And we're going to call this first ENG. Uh, a lot of the files coming across are DDS. And I've actually been converting mine to DDS. But for now, we're going to use MBM. And we're not ready to write. That's what's going to commit us to creating our part. So, and I do invite anyone that's into modding to, to definitely drop in some comments. Give us your hints, tips. This is my hideous way of doing things but it works. <laughs> so basically what we really need to do is we need to come in here. I'm going to delete this camera. I don't need that. We really just have this one part. That's our basic right here. Now, what we need to do in addition is make sure that this is still, here we go. It can't be, and, and we can't scroll in. Oh, we were in we were in game that was why we were in game okay so let's swing this down here so we can actually see our part rendered here you see we have all the colors showing everything's good everything's looking clean so let's go ahead and uh, clean ish let's go ahead and add the more important parts so you need you can have a few different transforms in here. It's transforms is what we're going to call them. Uh, it's basically an empty game object. So we're going to add in an empty child game object. Create empty child under game object. And basically what we need to do is keep these under cylinder. You get under cylinder as well. Okay. So we I'm just going to name this one with the stock name of thrust transform. And that's the name that they use for their transforms. Uh, there is also another one that I've seen in use of smoke point. And that's where your exhaust is going to show from. Uh, and then there is also another one, which we're just going to go here and we can hit duplicate after right clicking on it. And I like this one's name, so I'm going to use it. It's thrust transform flame. Can you name these whatever you want? Sure you can, you can name them whatever you want, but it's good to come up with a nice method that is going to be kind of generic for your processes. So that way it's not gonna, if you wanna reuse your configuration file to speed things up in the process, then it's gonna work for you. Uh, that's kind of what I've done. So now we have our thrust transform, which is here. And we actually need to move our thrust transform. So let's click on here so we can actually see our axis. So we need this to be pointing downwards. So what we have here is not good. So we need to rotate this. And we just have this one part, so it's really not that bad. Now, remember what I told you. Our Y is going to be up and down. Our Z is top, bottom and our X is side to side. So we're still looking pretty good here. So let's go ahead and we need to rotate our thrust transform so our blue, our Z, is facing downwards. So right now our X is 90 degrees rotated. So we're just gonna rotate that 180. And our smoke point as well. We're gonna rotate everything 180. So that way, everything's nice and clean. All right. And so now we need to go here and we need to drag all this down because you don't want this to all create right here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, if you wanted your gimbal, you can actually come here and you can actually create a gimbal. Thrust transform for your gimbal. So we can hit duplicate and go here and say gimbal 
and that's going to control where your gimbal is going to generate from. If you wanted it to generate from here where your thrust is being generated from, you can actually reuse these transforms as well. I'm just, I'm just going to put mine lazily about right here. Smoke point, we're going to drag this down a bit. And thrust transform flame, I want my flame to generate about right here. Alright, so that's about it. Let's go to our cylinder and let's apply a physics renderer. So let's go to physics. We're going to use mesh and we're going to hit convex. Really simple, so this one should work for us nice and easy. Really quick, easy design. So let's go ahead and hit save scene. And we're going to call this first engine. And that's going to give us the ability to, we're, we actually are ready to write our simple engine. So next up is our configuration file, which is interesting. We're going to, we're going to reuse one. We're going to scrap one, reuse it and see if we can make this work for us. So let's go ahead and hit write. And this is going to write to a unity game data folder for us to which we can go and grab in a few. Now, what you will also see in here, um, is we need to actually find where we are attaching our engine. So right now we have our attach point up top. That's where we want to put our object. So let's go to plane. And this is going to let us drag this plane. I use plane because it's, it's absolutely flat. And it can give us a pinpoint location as to where we need to be with this. So I'm just going to drag this up and down. And then I'm going to go over to our Y here. And we're going to go 9, 9. We can actually go up to 3. And I just kind of drag this down until I get to a point to where it's barely peeking over. And usually three numbers will do it for you. And it looks like that is the highest we can go as it peaks over. So we are looking at a positive 0 0.312 for our configuration. So I usually take this and I just leave it open. I don't save it with the plane in there, typically. So what we need to do now is we need to go and retrieve everything. So let's go on over to here and let's go to assets because I know assets is where it saved it for me under air tunnels, game data, AT small. This is just where I have everything saving. It's going to be your project name, game data, and then um, the, the project that you have it saved under. Unfortunately, mine's all saved under a project called air tunnels. This is why I said everyone's going to scream at me. Don't scream at me too loudly. I'm sorry, everybody. And the file size of my MBM file, yes, I understand. It is quite horrendous. I am still working on getting the textures down. The sizes are terrible right now. So let's jump over to Kerbal Space Program and Game Data. I'm going to go to my JDSA folder and we're actually going to create a new folder here for Jet Engines. Engines. I've been working on propellers so I prefer propellers to engines, to uh, Jet Engines. Alright, so we have our basic engine here but now we need to create a configuration file for this for this we can actually since we're just uh, simulating emulating recreating an existing engine we can actually go we're gonna we're gonna start off with one of the existing configuration files so let's go over to engine and we're just gonna go to jet engines and we're gonna use the basic jet engine we're just gonna copy that right on over and then we're gonna go back to our folder here under jet engines place this here Let's rename this to first ENG. I'm going to copy this out to save myself some clicking time. And we're going to edit this in Notepad++. So here, first things first, we have the venerable pork jet. We're going to change this over to twa. Um, we have our mesh, which we are actually going to use our mesh name here because I don't want to use this model tag. We're going to actually take this and delete it. Now what you mainly want to keep, remember how you remember all these. 
These are absolutely necessary. You'll see at the top and bottom um, that it will actually highlight the bottom of this one red. Let's me know that I've done everything properly in here and that it's not, uh, I'm not missing any of these in front, uh, beginning and end tags. I'm going to go to module test subject. I'm just going to get rid of that. I don't want it. Don't need it. Uh, module animate generic. We don't have any animations. We're going to get rid of that. Uh, we don't need this heat animation. <laughs> module alternator creates electrical charge from thrust uh, from when your craft is thrusted up. So we're going to keep that. Uh, module surface FX. Uh, we can keep that on. That's going to be the effects on the craft. I don't really bother with those on propellers. Running thrust. This is going to be your effects that's going to be applied to your craft. This is where your thrust transform is going to come into play. You see right here, this is a smoke trail light. We're going to change this to smoke point. Because that's the name of our, our, our transform that we created in Unity for this. So let's go ahead and we can say here, this is flame out. We're going to switch this to just thrust transform. And we're going to come to... See, that's the FX. That's the smoke point. We also need to do this for the engine as well. So it's already set to thrust transform. So we're pretty good here. And we're going to keep it using the same liquid fuel and air intake. Uh, and we're going to take this FX offset. It's set to XYZ offset, so a Z offset, which we're going to comment out. We really don't need that. Uh, here you can set your max thrust. We're going to set ours to just under. So we're going to set it to 100. Alright, so we should be good here. If we wanted to, we can remove any of these soft winds or anything like that. But we're really just going to let it rock in there. And is there anything else that may catch my attention? I think that is everything. If you wanted to change your propellants, you can do that here. I can make this an electric engine and remove the requirement for uh, intake air and just make it liquid fuel or just switch it completely over to electric charge if I wanted. And that would make the engine just be an electric charge gen uh, powered engine, which is pretty cool. Uh, you do want to come here and change your title. You want to change the name to first. I'm going to change mine to first engine. Uh, we have the com offset. We're going to switch this because we don't really need that. We do have to change our node stack top. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that that's the right one here. Because sometimes it can be kind of confusing. Yes, it should be fine. Um, I'm looking over here at my other configuration files saying, okay, is that fine? It should be fine. Because what will happen is if you don't do that right, it's not going to connect. And we need to come here, 312. So we're at a positive 312. So this is X, Y, Z. And then this is the other vector <laughs> you do want to have if you have whatever you have in here so x y z i have a value in y you want to come here and put a one in the in the corresponding one there that's what i've noticed that's what i do uh, you can look at the ksp configuration uh documentation online for more information but for just our general quick and dirty put a one if you have a value there just do it if it's a negative, then this is negative. If it's a positive, then this is positive. Saves you a lot of time and trouble. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out here. Clear this out. And then we can, description is our first engine. Manufacturer is JDSA. Title, it works. Well, the title is going to be the name of the engine, so I can't say that. So I can say, um, uh, 
Bean Expeller. Okay, so we have our engine, the the B T E that's E T E B T E dash O one being toxin expeller. But we're gonna change it so it looks nice and fancy. Alright, so let's go ahead and save our first engine. We are actually ready to rock now. So let's go ahead and toss this all from here. Make sure everything's good. Just generally looking over everything, making sure everything's capped off. We didn't we didn't remove any anything that doesn't need to be removed. And we should be okay. We should be ready to rock. All these values are you can modify any of these values you want. Just be very careful in how you're doing it. So let's go ahead and minimize that. We're saved. We have first engine, moo, on our MBM file. So we are ready to load the game. And let's see if we if I if I bollocked anything up. Hopefully I didn't. Cross your fingers. Okay, so now the game is loaded up. So now we get to see if our engine has popped into the game properly if we've made any mistakes which is highly likely because trying to do things all haphazardly quick is probably going to give us a bit of anxiety here <laughs> it's probably not gonna be the greatest oh, oh there it is the BTE bean toxin expeller and you see our connectors in the proper location and it connects properly and we have everything showing woot all right, so we should be okay. We're gonna go ahead and quick, quickly create a small test jet for this. So let's do that, let's do this. And let's create an intake. Well, let's slap one in intake. This is the 62.5 port I was telling you about. So this is, this is a perfect example, the NCS adapter. This is uh, 0.625. And then the flip side on the back here is 1.25, which is fantastic crap, uh, part to use as your basic. So my textures are slightly off. They are a little bit muddy and gross, but it will work for right now. So let's create, let's go ahead and create our quick airplane so we can see how well this works. Like I said, it's really not that complex to get an engine in here to, for the engine design to get done. Uh, people tend to make it a little bit more difficult than it really is. It's really not that hard. Now, if you want it to look good, then things get a little bit more complex. <laughs> Mine don't look good. Mine look okay. Mine work. That's what I'm happy about. They work. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to sneak that in there. We're not even going to care. This is just for a test. All right, so we're gonna create a really quick, simple, easy design. Let's go ahead and drop everything here. Roll, knock that down to 20, pitch. And now we're gonna grab this here. And move that to here. And we're gonna switch this to just y'all. So if anyone out there is wondering how do you quick, quickly create a workable airplane, this is exactly how you create a quick workable airplane. Um, I can use the small landing gear here. I usually use the medium, but I can indeed use the small. It's not too bad. You just have to be really careful with the placement because I like to place my mine here on the wings in the back which creates a bit of a problem when you go to launch really closely. So you can't do any steep takeoffs like this. We're gonna keep this right here near there. And we're gonna drag it down a bit. So it's still in contact, so it doesn't look too bad. And we're gonna go ahead and turn this steering off, turn the brakes all the way up so it doesn't smash into the front and we're gonna make sure everything there is good now we should be able to fly this nicely 
So let's go ahead and set up our action group because I like to do that for my engines. Toggle engine. And that's all we really need. And we're going to call this first engine. Let's do this. All right, so we're here at the desert base to try our new Skunk Works engine out. So let's go ahead, fire it on up. Uh, let's go ahead and put on our nice, easy everything. Engines are hot. I hear it smoking. I hear it firing up. Let's go ahead and give it some thrust. Go full throttle. We should see our effects start to kick out the back here. There you go. There's our effects. Alright, leveling out. Ready for flight. Let's test it out. And you see our thrust popping out the back here. And if we wanted, we could have set something to our gimbal. We didn't set up the gimbal this time, but we just like to check all the effects on there. You see the smoke effect going out the back there. And everything looks good to me. This is a successful test. And so that's, like I said, that's the beginning. That's just going to be the beginning of everything that you can create in here. This is a really simple engine, really easy to design. And you can see it actually gives us a nice current Delta V stats in Kerbal Engineer Redux. And we have our beam toxin expeller, everything showing here, props requirement met. Uh, we have appropriate thrust. Everything is matching up. So we look good. This is a quick and easy experimentation thing to do. It doesn't take very long. So if you want to see something else I've done, this is my propellers. You can see here, they actually are twisted turned. If I want to show you how to do this easier, um, there aren't many, really, I, it would take me a while because I'm really not too good at making propellers. I made a single propeller blade and I save that as a separate file and now I use that everywhere. I was shown how to do it by Eskandare. Don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right. S can dare Eskandare? I don't know. Let me know if I'm saying your name right. I'm so sorry. So let's go ahead and start our engines up. Still working on the sound effects, but they do work. So let's throttle up a little bit. And we have this delightful sound coming in here. Don't know how well you can hear it. I created this because I really like the sound of engines, of propeller engines. So we'll go up full thrust, and we should probably tone this down a bit. Thank you. Okay. And you'll see here, that's how it looks like when it's spinning. And I like the design. I like the power. It uh, doesn't get you quite up to Mach 1, but it will definitely do the trick. So this is just some of the things you can do when you are, in the, when you are generating your engines in the game. Let's go ahead and, and whew, that's so loud. I'm going to tone this down a little bit more. But yeah, this is just some of the things you can do when you kind of get the hang of things a bit more. We can go into the spinning parts later. It's actually not that complex. I figured it out, and now I have a nice process, and I keep true to that process, and it lets me quickly create additional new props. Uh, so yes, I can show you how to do that in another video if anyone is interested. But for now, I definitely would suggest Fire Spitter or Airplanes Plus. They have a lot better methods of doing this than what I do. Basically, I'm just rotating a spinning, uh, the spinning part on the front. I'm not using a blur disc or anything, but I'm rotating everything up front in actually in a Blender and Unity at, uh, mm, I have to remember the exact speed. It's like 28. 79.99 and that gives me a nice little rotation but I'll show you that in another video but for now I'm gonna get on out of here so if you like to see hit that like button drop me in a comment let me know what you think if you have any hints tips for modding things definitely drop me in a comment I am still new to the modding scene engines are kind of fun I really like propeller engines and so I had to start making some more because as you see there's more propeller designs starting to be developed for Mars and I kind of think we uh, the game needs to focus a bit more on adding additional uh, propellers in I mean 
in my opinion, you have fantastic ones out there like Airplanes Plus, SXT, and Fire Spitter. And I honestly use Airplanes Plus for almost everything now. But I wanted to try my hand at creating my own. Even though theirs look way better, at least I have given it the good old try. And I like how it came out. Especially when I'm sitting here and I can see it. It doesn't have the same effect as all the blur disc, but it still looks pretty good. But for now, I'm going to get on out of here. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like button, drop me in a comment, let me know what you think. And I hope to catch you guys in the next video. Definitely let me know if this helps you out. That will be pretty cool. Jump on Discord and, you know, have some fun. Chat with us. We're, we're a fun little group of people. And uh, join our stream on Friday. We're going to do another stream. And I found a new location for the water base. It's kind of a hop, but it's going to be worth it in the end. But for now, I'm out. Till the next video. Peace. Oh god, I've said that.